stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and terror pining till he appeared. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh he. Good evening, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for this evening's Mass for the Christmas Vigil. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you made man manifest your love for all of us. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary, to live among us, to our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, love, and health. 
Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him who is God with us and Savior of all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Christmas to all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. We just pause now for a moment, asking the Lord again now to remove all the fears, all the worries, and the distractions from our minds. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, who gladdened us year by year, as we await and hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall you rejoice, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my son. people who know the joyful shout in the light of your countenance who reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, 
son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon to all of you and a blessed, peaceful, joyful, happy Christmas and may the year ahead be, be one of peace and health for everyone. Now after saying that, I'm reminded of the story of Mrs. Jones brought her 16-year-old daughter to the doctor because she said to the doctor she's uh, putting on weight and uh, she's got this craving every morning for food and she's got headaches. So the doctor gave her an extensive examination and then the doctor said to Mrs. Jones, I have news for you. 
Your daughter, Darla, is about, I would say, four months pregnant. And uh, the mother said, pregnant? Darla has never been with a man. Have you, Darla? No. And I never kissed a man either. So uh, the doctor makes his way over to the window, and he's staring out the window for about five minutes. And uh, Mrs. Jones said, is there anything out there, uh, doctor? And the doctor goes a little puzzled. No, no, no. The last time anything like this ever happened, a star was seen in the east, and three wise men were coming up over the mountain, and I'd be darned if I miss it again. (laughs) But what are we looking for. You know, years ago now, I always wanted to go to the place where Jesus was born, where he died, where he did his miracles. It's called the Holy Land. So the opportunity came, and I flew to Tel Aviv from New York. And it's about 14-hour journey or thereabouts. So anyway, we landed in Jerusalem, where Jesus died. And uh, the next day, I think, the bus driver said, we're going to go to to Bethlehem today. And I was delighted. We're going to Bethlehem, see where Jesus was born. I always wanted to see it. You know, you read about it in the scriptures. So anyway, we went, and uh, I was very anxious to see the place. And... uh, the next thing he brought us into a restaurant and I had no interest in a restaurant at this time after the restaurant, do you know what he said? we now have two hours for shopping and I'm saying to myself well I don't shop in Taunton I didn't come to Bethlehem to shop so I whispered in his ear I said you can drop the group at the shops drop me off where Jesus was born okay So anyway, he dropped them off, and he's bringing me back. We're in Bethlehem City, and there's kind of a hill up, but the traffic was kind of... He was going very slow, and there was a lot of traffic. And I said to him, is it far from here? He says, no, it's only about a quarter of a mile. I says, drop me here. I'll walk the rest. Come back later when you have the group. So anyway, I got out, and I remember it clearly, going up the road, And uh, this man coming out wanted me to buy rosary beads. Those rosary beads fell apart. They weren't the best. So anyway, I looked. Then I made a turn. And uh, what would you know? The name of the area was Manger Square. So there I am. And I'm looking around. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't see any big church I see some stone buildings, but I don't see a big church or basilica. So I saw a few men kind of standing up against the wall. And I said to them, "Uh, do you know where Jesus was born? And uh, I thought they didn't understand me. And they pointed to a door. See the door there? And I'm saying to myself, that's never the way in, is it? So, do you know what that door is called? The door of humility. So anyway, I went in. As you can see, there's a lot of stone just there, very old. And the minute I went in, this man came up to me dressed in a suit, who was one of those working there. And he just looked at me, and he said to me, Father, come with me. So I followed him. We went down one flight of stairs, down another flight of stairs and there in front of me a lot of oil lit lamps lighting and there in the ground at one side is you cannot barely see the star there but in the next one you should be able to see it when it comes up there's the star and I'm looking at that star a silver star you can see the marble is kind of old around it But it says in Latin, this is where Jesus Christ was born to the Virgin Mary. 
And I remember kneeling down there, touching the star, the very place where they say Jesus was built, was born. And um, I stayed there for a few moments. And then I'm saying to myself, you know, a star is not going to do it for me. And I got up, and I went back up, up the two flights of stairs. And I know it sounds kind of different, but I said to the man who brought me in as he looked at me, I want to see Jesus. And he said to me again, come with me, Father. And I was wondering where we were going. So he got a key, and he opened this door. And the minute he opened the door, there was a beautiful chapel with a tabernacle, and not a star, but a light near the tabernacle. And I remember kneeling down there, making my holy hour. I knew the group wouldn't be back for a while. They were shopping. And I said to myself, Lord, you promised that you would never leave us alone. You see, today, in our time, Jesus is not laying in a manger in Bethlehem. He's not laying in a manger in Bethlehem today in 2023. But he is. He is. In every tabernacle. This is the Bethlehem. It's not a star over the tabernacle. It's a candle burning brightly. In fact, that candle lights all the time to remind us that Jesus is present among us. It's not Bethlehem. It's every Catholic tabernacle in the world. You know, earlier today, I was out walking, and uh, from the distance, I could see two women, and one was giving the other woman a present, and it was wrapped in shiny paper, Christmas paper, and the other woman kind of looked at her, and then looked at her again, and said to her, I'm afraid to open it. You know, the scriptures tell us that Jesus was born not wrapped in shiny paper, but in fact rags, swaddling clothes. He's saying to us, I hope you're not afraid to open your hearts to me. Because without your hearts being open, my love, my joy, my peace, my Holy Spirit cannot come into you. He's asking us this Christmas and beyond, just open your hearts to me. Those who were first to come to be with him were actually those who had nothing. They were shepherds in the field. They were the ones who were closest to him. He didn't ask anything for them. We'll try and I'll shout this little baby here. He didn't want anything from them. His gift, and he was saying to us, and he's saying to us, the gift you can give me is just to be with me. As that woman said, I'm afraid to open the gift. Don't be afraid to open your hearts to the God who made us. He comes through light, through peace. It's called the Holy Spirit, but sometimes to open our hearts is not easy. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us humbly now on this Christmas Eve profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Come, amen. On this Christmas Eve now, we humbly raise our hearts, our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him. That the church may continue to grow in number and virtue as she carries out the mission she has been given by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. That the Prince of Peace may reign in, in the hearts of all people this Christmas and in the coming year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our, our prayer. prayer. That all who mourn may be comforted and all in need may be satisfied. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our, our prayer. prayer that the Lord may be a constant presence in our hearts and homes this Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all who have died may be welcomed into God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for today's Mass intention, parishioners living and deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray now this Christmas that peace would come to each heart, each family, our country, and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. We just pause now for a moment in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you know the needs this evening in the hearts of all who are present here and all those who are listening and watching on the airwaves. In a special way, we bring all our prayers before you through the intercession of the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming feast, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you may manifest the beginning of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that in we recognize in him God made visible. We may be caught up through him, in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones, the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. again come to the most sacred part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you have created, rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, O Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to give a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. Mm. 
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
This is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O oh virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O oh mother of the word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may draw vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just on behalf of the whole parish and beyond, remind you again, for those who are listening on the website uh, throughout the world, my own family in Ireland, the new baby Niall, we want to wish all a beautiful Christmas, but especially the gift that baby Jesus wants to give all of us is himself. 
It's easy to receive him because he's wrapped in rags and he wants to come into our hearts. But all he's asking us, don't be afraid. Open that present, that gift. So we just ask for the year ahead that each heart would be open to the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus, that health would be given to all and joy and peace that we all need. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, by the incarnation of his Son, has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated the most holy night. Drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of victory. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son, the saving birth, be announced to the shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of peace and favor, and make you share with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you again for your presence today. And again, may this Christmas and beyond be one of peace and health. God bless all of you. Thank you.